I'm Dr. Jacob Tolar, Dean of University of Minnesota Medical School and a clinician, researcher, and a 30-year loyalist of, the, of this university. I came here as a PhD student and stayed uh, because this is the best place research and clinical care and education can be done, in my mind. Our medical school is at the heart of the academic medical practice and what it means to us is that we focus on research that advances the practice of medicine and allows us to provide the best clinical care, the best clinical outcomes that improves lives of our patients, their families and communities. Our Department of Surgery has a storied history of pioneering research that then led to the better care. You can take it from radical advancement in solid organ transplants to development of equipment and devices to pushing the boundaries of understanding the physiology of cardiology. And all these improvements have stemmed from the strength of our research programs. This annual Research Week celebrates the long tradition and the bright future of medical and scientific research at our medical school. We are working together to engage in research that helps take care of our patients from across Minnesota and beyond in the best possible way. Thank you. Welcome everybody to Surgery Research Week. We're really excited that you could be with us to see the work of our six divisions in research and 11 clinical departments are conducting across all of the domains of surgical research, which includes basic translational and health services research. In addition to that, we have a large component of health services research encompassing education work that we're particularly proud of. We hope that you can be stimulated by the work you see today and come up with ideas of your own or join existing programs and projects. We hope you enjoy your time today and look forward to further interactions. Thank you very much for this opportunity to introduce our uh, division for basic and translational research. We are a very diverse uh, research division, uh, which has a variety of contents. And uh, uh, let me introduce uh, what kind of research we do with the name of the faculties who does that. The first group of the, uh, the contents are virotherapy and gene therapy for cancers. We are trying to develop something to treat advanced cancers and uh, mainly by designing oncolytic adenoviruses. Mainly we focus on systemic delivery for advanced cancer patients and also try to develop something as a serenostic. Serenostics means uh, it, it allows a ser uh, therapy and diagnostics all together by using uh, radio iodine, which has been done by Dr. David Ova. So here, you know, me and Dr. David Ova and Dr. Darwin has been working on that. And the next uh, contents, the research contents are obesity and bariatric surgery and their effect on to pancreatic cancer, which I have been pursuing with Dr. Vikramudin uh, for several years. Another interesting content is Dr. Lucek's work about the acute care related issues in surgery. Mainly, she has been focusing on circadian rhythm and uh, metabolism in acute care setting. She has been closely working with Dr. Bielman to address those kind of issues. Dr. Subramanian has been working for the uh, elucidating the function of uh, extracellular vesicles, particularly in the meaning of uh, immunological function and uh, how the tumor cells are uh, changing immunological status in the tumor by using extracellular vesicles. He's been working on elucidation and also trying to develop something as an intervention in order to allow the cancer immunosyrup. Last and foremost is microbi gut microbiome has been uh, studied by Dr. Chris Terry. Gut microbiome is very much in you know, emerging field in can particularly in cancer. You know, I'm actually a cancer guy, so just I'm interested in cancer side. But the 
anyway, so the, it is involved in multiple different kinds of diseases. So she, he is the expert of a ma- ma- gut microbiome and collaborating with many members. So we are very diverse division and uh, we do a lot of different researches and we are looking for to collaborate with the members of DOS and other department members on campus in order to bring uh, things, uh, elucidate things, and also bring it toward the uh, development of therapeutics. Thank you very much for this opportunity. Hello, my, my name is uh, Ranjit John. Um, I'm a professor in the Department of Surgery and the chief of the Division of Cardiothoracic Surgery. Uh, I would like to let you know about our research mission. Uh, our group comprises of nine and now uh, 10 cardiothoracic surgeons. Uh, our research encompasses the full breadth of adult cardiac surgery. Uh, we do multiple clinical uh, research studies involving clinical trials as well as both prospective and retrospective studies. Uh, The fields that we work on ranges from uh, coronary artery bypass grafting to valve replacement to complex aortic surgery, and especially in the fields of uh, heart and lung failure, namely heart transplantation, lung transplantation, and ventricular assist device support. We collaborate with um, a cardiologist to look at uh, clinical outcomes in patients with heart and lung failure as well as patients getting uh, support with ECMO. Uh, Our research also encompasses uh, basic science uh, in the fields of immunobiology for lung transplantation and animal models to study coronary revascularization uh, in uh, myocardial infarction models. Um, We actively participate in all the major um, cardiothoracic uh, meetings throughout the year including the AATS, STS, Western and Southern Thoracic meetings, as well as the American Heart Association and International Society of Heart and Lung Transplant meetings. Um, Our group as a whole publishes uh, multiple peer-reviewed manuscripts in all these fields and has many peer-reviewed presentations in these meetings. Uh, I welcome you to come and meet with us. We work with surgical residents, medical students, as well as um, uh, medical professionals in the fields of uh, cardiology and pulmonology. Thank you. Hello, I'm Dr. Wolfgang Gertner, Chief of the Division of Colon and Rectal Surgery at the University of Minnesota. Our division is dedicated to performing cutting edge research in the field of basic and translational science, colorectal oncology, pelvic floor disorders, and inflammatory bowel disease. Our division is also fortunate to have nationally recognized basic science and clinical researchers with a very high level of federal and private support. We are also very fortunate to be at an institution where collaborations allow for unique research opportunities. We currently offer research opportunities in basic science and clinical research, and currently have two general surgery residents as well as numerous medical students collaborating with our research efforts. We're also very excited and hopeful to integrate a research fellowship starting in 2023. We are committed to contribute to the overall research mission of the Department of Surgery at the University of Minnesota. Our current research topics include the human microbiome and how it applies to colorectal diseases and wound healing, healthcare disparities in the management of colorectal cancer, prevention of anal cancer in high-risk populations, the surgical management of pelvic floor disorders, and in-depth basic science and clinical research in patients with locally advanced rectal cancer. We are very excited to have young researchers collaborate with our division and look forward to collaborating with you in the future. Thank you. I'm Jeffrey Chipman, Chief of the Division of Critical Care and Acute Care Surgery. Research in our division is growing and flourishing with multiple projects, presentations, and publications, including in such journals as Cell, PNAS, Nature, JAX, and JAMA Surgery, among others. Foremost is the Minnesota Critical Care Outcomes Research Effort, or MINCOR, overseen by Chris Tignanelli and Nick Ingram, 
that has over 70 projects and over 30 publications since its inception around four years ago. All members of the division are active participants. Interests in the division are in measuring surgical, trauma, and critical care outcomes using large administrative databases and by mining electronic medical records. Projects involve natural language processing and using best practice alerts in electronic medical records. Other work is at the intersection of health outcomes and surgical education, using electronic medical record and claims data to understand relationships between trainee performance and early career outcomes in practice. We have projects on enhanced recovery pathways and video-based objective assessments of technical skills. Several members of the division have interests in global surgery, specifically strengthening health systems, improving surgical infection care, and reducing antimicrobial resistance. Finally, surgical education has long been a part of the division's efforts with the motto that we should teach using evidence-based education, just as we care for patients using evidence-based medicine. Our goal is to create the evidence-based education. Thank you for your time. Hi, I'm Dick Bianco. I'm a professor in the Department of Surgery. I'm also the Carmela Lynch Chair in Thoracic and Cardiovascular Surgery at the University. I've been at the University since the late 70s, early 80s. Uh, and so it's, a, it's a, been a long road and I'm still actively engaged and happy to come to work every morning. Um, experimental surgery is a division within the Department of Surgery and really describes surgical-based research and education. We're, we're here, uh, besides faculty-driven research like my own, we're here to support the residents and other students in, in achieving their research goals. And that could be a, a resident research project that you would accomplish in your two years research rotation, hopefully leading to a terminal, another terminal degree for you. Uh, but we offer all, offer all those resources. We can help you find a project based on your academic interests, implement it, do all the compliance uh, in forms that are extremely important as part of your education, and conduct the research itself. So experimental surgery is here to help you as a young researcher get your research program started. Uh, easy to get involved in ESS? Call me. Uh, I'm in the department directory. Uh, in order to initiate a project for your Department of Surgery residence, it's as simple as a phone call. Um, and we can get you started. I'm Dr. Dan Leslie, Chief of the Gastrointestinal and Bariatric Surgery Division. Our division is devoted to characterizing the impact of inflammation on overall health at the patient, patient organ, and tissue level. The experimental model we use most commonly is that of obesity, which impacts the health of at least 42% of adults in the United States, and about 9% of the adult population has at least class three obesity, corresponding to BMI 40 or higher. The inflammation of obesity is associated with fatty liver disease, with diabetes, and other health conditions. Our main laboratory goal has been to characterize the impact of weight loss interventions, commonly bariatric surgery, on disease progression, disease stabilization, improvement, or cure in some cases. Our division offers numerous opportunities for participation in research and education. These may range from writing case reports or more substantial journal submissions to multi-year basic science laboratory collaborations with colleagues both in our department and outside with expertise in biochemistry, immunology, infectious disease, or gastroenterology, as our residents have done in the past. Our team also has experience with and access to large data sets, including the surgical data mark funded by our department, from which impactful surgical outcomes are being discovered. These experiences are available for pre-medical and medical students, along with surgical residents and fellows. We support the Department of Surgery's research commitment as an academic and clinical center of excellence by publishing manuscripts on outcomes, by investigating the impact of bariatric surgery on fatty liver inside an NIH-funded R01 study, and by continually modeling our clinical care for patients based on the outcomes of our investigations. 
We expect that residents in the lab will present at the meeting of the American College of Surgeons, along with publishing outcomes in appropriate journals, amongst other opportunities. We are continuing to generate new data and recognize the importance of finding new insights in our field and publishing them. Dear colleagues, I'm Dr. Ray Zhang, a health data scientist and informaticist. I'm the founding chief of Division of Health Data Science in the Department of Surgery and also direct for the Natural Language Processing Information Extraction or NLP IE program. I'm excited to lead and shape a new division which aims to advance surgery and other health domains using innovative data science methods. My own research develops innovative computational methods and tools to analyze real-world data, such as electronic health record data, patient-generated data, such as behavioral data, app data, patient-reported outcomes, as well as biomedical literature. From this work, we can better treat patients, analyze outcomes, and treatments of diseases, as well as discover novel biomedical associations or knowledge. Ultimately, with the goal of translating these findings into clinical practice or further advancing the state of biomedical science. The Division of Health Data Science drives innovative approaches to extract or retrieve information and manage knowledge from large-scale and multimodal data in biomedical research and clinical care. These approaches, such as data mining, natural language processing, human-computer interaction, causal discovery, data management, including knowledge representation, and many other areas are extremely powerful and are able to provide novel insights. We invite faculty and trainees from other divisions to collaborate with our newly formed division by initiating research ideas that can potentially be addressed using biomedical and clinical data, and to work with us on joint research projects and grant opportunities. We also provide mentoring opportunities to faculty and trainees, mostly by participating in our cutting edge research projects and working with our division faculty. Our initiative support the Department of Surgery's research commitment as an academic center of excellence by providing expertise in health data science to provide a supportive environment that enables transformative discoveries and innovation, produces not knowledge and supports translational clinical research. While we are not a division that provides direct clinical care, the division contributes or provides service to clinical care in helping to advance our understanding of surgery and other health domains, and helping improve clinical outcomes through much of its efforts. Thank you. Hi, uh, I'm Dr. Pranav Sinha. I, I'm a professor in surgery, and I'm the chief of pediatric cardiac surgery and the co-director of the Pediatric Heart Center at the University of Minnesota Masonic Children's Hospital. I believe that any clinical program should approach research in a fashion that is very similar to R&D of any major progressive company, which invests in improving the current situation through research and innovation. Even if you have achieved clinical excellence, there's always room for improving it through further innovation and research. In our daily practice, we have to constantly keep asking ourselves, how can we do what we're doing today in a better way in the future? In addition to outcomes-based research through data analysis, our department personally has gravitated towards pediatric cardiovascular device developments. A few projects that are underway are pediatric ventricular assist device designs, prototype development in preclinical studies, as well as development of new technology to measure cardiac output in newborns with complex single ventricle physiology as well as hardware and software development that are aimed to improve the quality of cardiopulmonary resuscitation in children. Our goal in the next year is to establish collaborative research partnerships within the university to continue uh, the, these projects that I mentioned before in-house. 
This will allow us to develop programs within the university to further advance our work from the past and bring our funded projects that are currently outsourced over here. Soon we'll be looking for interested undergrads, postdocs, and research assistants with experience and capabilities in data abstraction and analysis, large animal circulatory models, as well as engineering skills such as mechanical and computer sciences engineering. Uh, stay tuned for further updates on what's coming out of our department. Thank you very much. Good morning. My name is Dan Saltzman. I am the division head of pediatric surgery, and we have a robust academic division of pediatric surgery. We have five faculty, Drs. Acton, Lassiter, Hess, Segura, and myself. We have um, opportunities for research in both outcomes, clinical research, as well as basic science research. Outcomes in clinical research encompass educational opportunities with Dr. Acton, as well as outcomes in clinical uh, surgery with Drs. Lassiter and Hess. My lab looks at basic science in microbial-based cancer research, and Dr. Segura's lab studies necrotizing enteral colitis. Thank you. Hi, I'm Mel Graham. I direct the Preclinical Research Center in the Department of Surgery. PCRC performs multidisciplinary biomedical research that is primarily aimed at the development of novel immunotherapies, regenerative medicine, and vaccines. Our major research programs target diabetes, obesity, and cell and organ transplantation. We're uniquely positioned to model complex therapies in primate models of disease, and we only use primates when there are no other alternatives because of their similarity to humans in genetic makeup, behavior, and organ system function to understand, prevent, or treat human disease. Our distinctive program in behavioral management supports the engagement of our animals with their care in a way that balances their needs and wants with the scientific aims and improves translational relevance to our clinical patients. Research opportunities in my lab address issues in human and animal health and well-being focused on two closely related issues. The first being that we develop methods to understand immunometabolism towards innovative therapies for diseases with high public health impact diabetes, obesity, and infectious disease, and our second being that we identify the general reasons why animal models often fail to predict human outcomes in our patients, and we provide solutions to improve the efficiency and well-being of our animal models. Current projects in my lab include, on the animal well-being side, optimal design and the impacts of behavioral management on coping, physiology, and well-being of primates. And on the human health side, the development of predictive biomarkers and regenerative medicine approaches in primates to reverse metabolic disease, induce immune tolerance or immune recognition, and replace damaged cells. My name is Eric Jensen. I'm the Chief of Surgical Oncology here at the University of Minnesota. Our division is focused mainly on clinical outcomes research, but we also have opportunities for basic science research, both in viral therapies, uh, as well as immune function and tumor immunology. Our goals really for uh, surgical residents and medical students who join us are to help you accomplish the goals that you are trying to achieve. So uh, really our whole focus is on supporting residents and students to achieve their dreams, whether it be a fellowship in surgical oncology or other specialties that might be related. I think most people know us as a clinical outcomes group. We typically publish between five and 15 papers uh, per year, so we're very productive. And that gives residents a lot of opportunity uh, to grow their CV and expand their interests. Um, more recently, we have added a basic science component as well. So there's really a lot of potential uh, for you to grow in whichever direction uh, interests you the most. I guess the uh, addition to our group that's most recent is uh, the opportunity to participate in global surgery, which is, I think, a huge uh, benefit and a huge opportunity. We have opportunities to uh, perform surgeries in other countries uh, on mission trips, but we also have a lot of research opportunities that go along with sometimes underserved or indigenous populations. So that's another tremendous opportunity if that interests you. 
Uh, we certainly align with the Department of Surgery's uh, mission as it relates to research, and we're really proud of that. I think most of the residents that have come through our research program that have had an interest in surgical oncology are able to match at the top tier programs in the country. And that's something we're really proud of. So if you have an interest in surgical oncology research, please reach out to me. I'd be more than happy to talk or communicate uh, on any level, anytime. We hope you join us. My name is Rafael Andrade. I'm the chair of the Division of Thoracic Surgery within the Department of Surgery at the University of Minnesota. Our research goals are threefold. Basic science, clinical research, and sustainability research. Our basic science project focuses primarily on 3D bioprinting of trachea and esophagus. We work in collaboration with Dr. Angela Panscalcis Mortari uh, with the Stem Cell Research Lab and the Experimental Surgery Services. Our uh, clinical research focuses a lot on database research. We have large database resources, but we have also recently joined the Thoracic Surgery Oncology Group, which opens the door for clinical trials. And this is a brand new opportunity. Finally, our sustainability research focuses on reducing the environmental footprint of surgery at the same time as reducing costs. And this is a primary interest to me and is also very relevant nowadays. I'm very glad that the uh, climate deal uh, package seems to be having rebirth in the Senate. Residents and fellows have multiple research opportunities within the Division of Thoracic Surgery. The easiest is clinical research. You can uh, primarily do the database research, look at retrospectively. Uh, at what we do, we uh, love surgical innovation and we like publishing this and we have a good track record. The new opportunity is participating in clinical trials, which we can also do, which I believe if a, re a resident would like to participate in 2023, we will have everything set up by then. The lab research is the opportunity to spend two or three years with Dr. Angela Panoskalsis and Dr. Illich Diaz and get this really jump started and on the map. For sustainability research, we always need help. We need a lot of help. Finally, our mission is to participate within the mission of the Department of Surgery of pioneering research, and we have a name in surgical innovation and to form leaders, surgical leaders in research. Our ultimate goal is to become a destination for talent. Thank you. So my name is Andrew Adams. I lead the Division of Transplant Surgery here at the University of Minnesota. Our division is dedicated to improving the lives of organ transplant donors and recipients. We focus on basic science, translational, and clinical research projects. Uh, research topics include transplant immunology, uh, ischemia reperfusion injury, cryopreservation, immune tolerance, xenotransplantation, as well as efforts uh, in clinical outcomes evaluating equity and access to transplant, the long-term effects of living donation, and the drivers of late transplant failure. We encourage collaboration and invite investigators and those interested from all backgrounds that uh, have an interest in the field of transplantation to reach out to any of us for opportunities to become involved. We frequently support students, residents, fellows in meaningful research opportunities, including exposure at local, regional, national meetings, as well as individual grant submissions. Uh, in addition, we promote the development of junior faculty members interested in prioritizing research as an important part of their career. Our division seeks to support the department's overall mission of promoting world-class research that influences the way we practice medicine. We seek to engage in meaningful uh, research efforts to understand the biology, uh, assess the potential through translational models, and then finally evaluate the impact of patient outcomes through involvement in clinical trials and clinical outcomes research. We'd love to have anybody who's interested uh, join our group as we uh, move forward uh, in the next frontier of transplant. Hello, 
I'm Dr. Amy Reed, Director of Vascular Services in the Heart and Vascular Service Line and Professor-in-Chief of Vascular and Endovascular Surgery at the University of Minnesota. Our specialty in the Division of Vascular and Endovascular Surgery is dedicated to clinical research, particularly focused on aortic dissection, through the use of our International Registry of Aortic Dissection, as well as other vascular outcomes, tracked in our National Registry, the Vascular Quality Initiative Registry, where we look at outcomes of vascular procedures and patients, both on a national and a regional level. We invite professionals in our field and others in biomedical engineering to collaborate with us in these undertakings that involve evaluation of our patients and our techniques for patients undergoing open or endovascular procedures. Our initiatives support the Department of Surgery research commitment as an academic and clinical center of excellence by presenting and publishing our work regionally and nationally. Thank you very much. I'm Paul Isio, I'm a professor here in the Department of Surgery. Also have joint appointments in Integrated Biology and Physiology in the Carlson School of Management, where I help teach new product design and business development. I'm also the Associate Director for the Institute for Injury and Medicine, uh, focusing on professional education and outreach. I've directed the Visible Heart Laboratories, uh, which is uh, within the Department of Surgery, and we perform uh, preclinical research and translational research on medical technologies with a focus on cardiac devices and transplantation research. The Visible Heart Laboratories is a large group of individuals. We have a number of research scientists. Currently, there are seven PhD students, five master's students, a couple postdocs. We have medical students rotating in and out, uh, undergraduates doing directed research and volunteer work. So it's a large, um, vibrant group of individuals, and um, we invite others to join us um, in the work that we do relative to translational research. And one of the beauties of the lab is there's a lot of different activities ranging from bench top work and uh, tissue testing all the way to reanimated organs. And active projects are going on, which um, individuals can join in. In the lab, though this is, you know, we're in the basement of the Mayo building. Um, these are the original labs where, you know, the Department of Surgery did a lot of their preclinical research. And there's a rich leg history and legacy down here. These are the labs where C. Walt Noel High collaborated with Earl Bakken, the founder of Medtronic, to come up with the first wearable pacemaker um, that was utilized here back in 1957 um, on some preclinical animal researches. And that same day, it was utilized up in the ICU to pace a young child. So this, uh, we hope to continue this legacy. Uh, we have a rich collaboration with Medtronic. We've been doing the Visible Heart Project uh, with Medtronic for 25 years, trained a number of um, uh, PhD students, master's students that now work in industry, but we um, work with clinicians and we really want to carry on this tradition of innovation in the medical technologies between clinicians and engineers. And this is a really rich environment uh, to do this. Um, so we have a lot of opportunities to uh, perform research in the lab um, on translational things, but also educational opportunities. We have a large focus on creating educational modules on cardiac anatomy um, and other uh, approaches using mixed reality, where basically you can do virtual reality or 3D printed models um, of different organs and tissues uh, in the lab. So we invite those that might be interested to come in and see what we do. We're down in the basement of the Mayo building. We're doing studies routinely throughout the week. Um, we're happy um, even just to, to tour you through um, and see all the different uh, activities going on in the lab, whether you want to collaborate or not. There's a lot to learn down here and a lot of rich history. So we're happy to always um, tour people through and share that.
I'm Sonia, and I'm currently one of the lab residents in the second half of my two dedicated research years. Being in the lab has allowed me to refocus and regroup in between our very busy and challenging clinical training. While the change of pace has been a benefit, research has posed its own challenges that have pushed me in new and different ways. The skills and knowledge I've gained during research have been valuable to my intellectual and personal growth and have provided a solid foundation for incorporating academics in the future. One of the highlights of being in the lab has been the ability to delve deeply into my field of study, as well as learning how to think about clinical questions from a new perspective. I've come to appreciate how uniquely positioned surgeon scientists are to be the drivers for improvements and change in medicine through research. As someone who is planning to pursue a colorectal fellowship after residency, research has been critical, not only for deepening my knowledge of the field and giving me publication opportunities, but also because it has allowed me to form close relationships with my mentors. So far, I've been fortunate enough to have a grant funded, present my work at conferences, get some publications, and operate on over 200 mice. I hope to contribute to the strong legacy of scientific discovery within the University of Minnesota Department of Surgery and to help pass the torch onto the residents to come.